good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the public exhibit, uh, group exhibit of hydrogen fuel cells and batteries at Hanover Messe 2014. For those wandering in the aisles, you can come and sit down, have a tea and coffee on us, and take in the next presentation. I will be discussing automation equipment for fuel cells and battery manufacturing with Greenlight Innovation. Please welcome President and CEO of Greenlight Innovation, Ross Bailey. Thank you. Hi, Ross. Hi. So as a Canadian company, for some of the individuals here who maybe aren't aware uh, of what you do or about the company, could you please provide a bit of an overview and, and history of Greenlight Innovation? Sure. My pleasure. So thanks for, uh, thanks for being here, everyone. So uh, my name again, Ross Bailey, president of Greenlight Innovation. Greenlight has been uh, a leader in fuel cell testing equipment for about the last 23 years. We got our start back in the early 1990s, uh, working with uh, Ballard Power Systems and uh, the local fuel cell cluster that uh, kind of grew up in the Vancouver, Canada area. Um, over that time, it's changed uh, ownership a few times. Uh, in, the, uh, in the early 2000s, it was purchased by Hydrogenics and it was amalgamated with, uh, uh, with their test group and it was rebranded as Hydrogenics Test Systems. And we ran under that name for a number of years. And we were the global leader in, in test equipment. Again, serving primarily the fuel cell industry, but we did some work in batteries as well. So in uh, 2007, uh, Hydrogenics decided to get out of the business, so we took it over So uh, through a management buyout. And uh, so we've just celebrated our six year anniversary as a private organization, uh, owned 100% by the management team. And so uh, part of our growth strategy in the company was to expand just beyond uh, the, the traditional fuel cell test benches that we're really known for, but into battery testing and, and some, of the, uh, some other product lines which we can talk about. And we sell our products to automotive companies, government labs, uh, materials companies that are developing materials for batteries and fuel cells, as well as uh, academic labs and uh, you know, stack developers, uh, fuel cell developers, and battery companies. Okay, so Greenland Innovation has been here in previous years. Um, yes. There's been some great news since last year. They had an acquisition of an automated automation division. Uh, shed some light on that, on how that came about and what that means for the company. Yeah, sure. So this is actually really big news for us. And in a, in a lot of ways, it was kind of like, hey, we're, we're growing up. We're getting to be a bigger company now. So we acquired uh, an automation, an industrial automation company called Commonwealth Automation. And Commonwealth is based in the lower mainland of uh, BC, not too far from Vancouver, but you know, a couple of hundred miles or so from Vancouver. And their specialty was uh, automation equipment, production equipment, and essentially manufacturing equipment for fuel cell companies. And uh, they also did a fair bit in the way of battery pack manufacturing, so making uh, automated uh, pack welders using laser and resistance welding equipment. Uh, they, they really got their legs, uh, got on their feet working with Ballard Power Systems over the years. Yeah. So that was where they got their start. And then they've done work for uh, AFCC, Ballard, uh, Mercedes, so many of the fuel cell companies that are kind of based locally in Vancouver. So what sort of volume did they have in terms of, uh, of actual units of this automation equipment? Yeah, so they've probably done about 600 projects over the years. And, and they've done uh, quite a number of projects outside of the fuel cell space in, in solar, um, in, in just general manufacturing. But primarily they were sort of a geographic based. A lot of their customers were in the Vancouver area and, the, you know, and in Canada. So part of our... Uh, our objective is to take the product lines that they had developed and uh, sell those to our customer base that's global. So what sort of automation is it? Is it just one component or can you really customize it for a variety? Can you pro provide a little bit of detail in terms of the scalability of, of these automation projects? Sure, so, so typically these uh, automation projects for manufacturing are customized. So you know, we would go to a, a customer's location and, and I'll use fuel cells as an example and see kind of how they're assembling fuel cells, what their processes look like. And then we can go in and you know, recommend uh, you know, automated work cells. We can make tooling for alignment. Um, you know, a, big, a big product that we've had a lot of interest in actually in the last month since we've closed this acquisition is the stack assembly fixture. And this is a large press 
for, uh, for compressing the stacks. And it has alignment features, so you can align all the plates in the, in the fixture. And uh, th there's a lot of variety in how you can do that. You can have just a vertical fixture, quite simple uh, press type fixture, or you can have quite a sophisticated fixture that tilts back and can't sideways, and that helps uh, use end plate alignment. So where the, the orientation of the plates and the datums are on the outside edge of the plate, so you're nesting the cells into a fixture, uh, automatically uh, compresses the system, and then it does a leak test before you actually enclose the stack, you either before you weld the straps on it or bolt it together with tie rods, and that way you can detect if you have a quality problem before the stack is actually manufactured. So that's kind of one example of a, of a product and some of the permutations that uh, you can drive from it. So what does this mean for the end consumer? So now that you're involved in the automation side, um, you're also involved uh, in the testing side, uh, how does this benefit the end user, your customers? Yeah, sure. So, so what this has actually done for us, it allows us to engage our customers further up the value chain. Because typically our test equipment is used in R&D or, or end of line production testing when they build a fuel cell or, or battery pack. So now what we're able to do is we're able to kind of integrate the testing further up the, the uh, manufacturing process. And you know, that's important for a number of reasons, but it allows our customers to reduce their costs. They can improve their, uh, their yields. They can uh, catch issues sooner in the production cycle and um, reduce labor in a lot of cases because uh, you know, by implementing uh, sort of uh, work, improved work processes and so with some automation, uh, they can reduce their labor content. So you're based in Canada, and in terms of, of this new technology, is it going to be predominantly available in Canada, or are you looking to oversee the global markets as well for this <coughs> automation equipment? Yeah, that's a good question. So for you know, a small Canadian company, we sell probably 90% of our equipment overseas or into the U.S. So um, we, have, uh, we have a gl global, global reach. We've got distributors in Japan, China, Korea, Singapore, you know, you name a market, we're, we, we're represented there. And then we're uh, well represented in Europe. We have sales and service in Germany. And so, you know, our concept is really to sell this equipment around the world and, and continue, of course, serving our customers in the, in the Vancouver region. Okay. Um, in terms of m more, more of these examples, could you perhaps just discuss like, some of the, uh, the issues that, that may arise within the R&D facilities that, that this can really, really tar target? Yeah, sure. You touch on a good point there uh, when you say R&D, because a lot of our customers are, are in kind of R&D mode, and they're kind of working through you know, developing fuel cells or batteries, and their, their intention is to ramp up production but they don't necessarily have the skill sets in-house of manufacturing engineering to, uh, to develop the equipment and machinery that you need to, to kind of go to that next level of, of production. So we're able to, to go in and work with them and, and help them transition from kind of an R&D one-off environment to you know, higher volumes using, you know, for example, reel-to-reel -reel processes for MEA manufacturing as opposed to discrete manufacturing where you're assembling one at a time. So, uh, you know, some examples I could cite here, just this week, talking with some customers who are assembling stacks, uh, fuel cell stacks, but uh, with sort of unassembled MEAs. So, you know, you put in a piece of carbon fiber paper and then you put the membrane on it and then you put on uh, another carbon fiber paper and then a plate and you kind of repeat that. You know, we can, we can make uh, equipment for laminating MEAs. So, uh, so rather than working with the discrete carbon, carbon coated membrane or GDLs, you can actually have a completed MEA assembly uh, with location datums on it, with a frame, you know, drop it into a, a, a fixture and, and have, a, have it located. And that will not only reduce labor, it'll make the, make the product uh, you know, more fi efficient, but it'll improve quality because you don't have the the added steps of adding all the individual materials. Reduce its human error. Exactly. <laughs> uh, is there any uh, questions from the audience for Ross uh, regarding this? Okay, well, in terms of, uh, of this, what does this mean for Greenlight uh, over the next couple of years? Are there any new uh, market applications you're going to look to or any new uh, regional aspects? Yeah, so we see this as, uh, as a way to grow the company. I mean, th the fuel cell test market is, is somewhat limited. Uh, in terms of the upside, I mean, it's a relatively small global market. So, you know, as a major player in it, 
we're kind of maxing that out. So we're looking to, to add in related, uh, related product offerings where we can engage with our customers and where we can leverage our core competencies in controls and design and engineering and um, yeah, and, and add value to what they're doing, really. That's great. Uh, was there a question over here in the corner? Sure. Yeah. Hi, thanks for your uh, presentation. My name is Thomas, and we're developing a new uh, nickel iron battery. Okay. Um, we're sort of fresh out of the lab, and we were wondering at what sizes you usually come in. So what, what's the smallest sort of upscaling project you... Okay. Sure. For uh, and are you thinking testing? So it's it's testing, but also in scaling up the manufacturing of larger volumes. And right. Okay. So, you know, our sweet spot is uh, what I would call um, low volume production. So I mean, w we're not going to be building automotive assembly lines. You know, building a hundred thousand engines uh, a year. Um, so, but in terms of scale, I mean, we can make uh, we can make production lines to make you know smaller batteries. I mean, physically, how big is your battery? Well, physically, they range from about um, uh, up to like one cubic meter. One cubic meter, and how heavy is that? Well, that, that, that's fairly heavy. We it's it's sort of on the heavier side of forty right. watt hours. So you're thinking about well from. From 50 to a couple of hundred of kilos. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, with without understanding or knowing your processes, I mean, we've made equipment um, in like vanadium redox flow batteries with active areas that are uh, like a square meter, right? And and those those can get pretty heavy too. They're large, you know. So we make up the handling devices, uh, the lifts, the carts. Um, you know, and, and then the material, you know, just the, uh, the trays and racks for handling the incoming materials and that. So in a case like that, the, it, it wasn't automated in any sense because it was very manual, still low volume, but we made a lot of manufacturing aids to, to help streamline the whole operation. Are there any other questions in the audience at all? No? Okay, well then at this time I'd like to thank Ross for coming to stage and uh, having this discussion with me. If anyone has any further questions or you would like to learn more information about Greenlight, please visit the booth. It's booth D64. It's just in the back here. And he'll be happy to answer more questions in further detail for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you.